Welcome to our course on Advanced Nutrition, Vitamins. In this lecture we're going to consider Vitamin C. We'll talk about its science and its clinical uses. The molecular structure is as shown here. The chemical name is ascorbic acid. We see it's a uh, structure with six carbons, some oxygens, some hydrogens, uh, we might figure this is related to the glucose molecule, which also has a uh, similar composition. Vitamin C is a vitamin, by which we mean that it's a micronutrient. It's a nutrient that we have to have in very small quantities, hence the prefix micro, and the human body is unable to produce it. Consequently, because it's chemically required in the body, it's got to be part of the daily diet so that all of our cells can function normally. Humans are almost unique on Earth in their inability to produce vitamin C. Most other species do this routinely, so for them it's not a vitamin, so it's a pro product of their normal metabolic processes. There's the guinea pig, which is another species that needs the vitamin, but pretty much everything else does not. Dogs and cats don't need to take vitamin C. <clears throat> Why is this? We can speculate, but it's probably genetic, and if that's the case, then genetic engineers may be able to figure out a solution. Figure out what kind of gene needs to be inserted in the genome, and maybe then humans won't need vitamin C in the future. The body will make all that it, the body has to have. It's water-soluble vitamin, so we can't store it beyond a certain amount. Um, any excess that we take it, that is not used by the cells is going to be flushed out in the urine. But individuals will have different needs. Um, there is what we call a recommended daily allowance, and that is essentially the amount of vitamin C you need to sustain life. But what if you're ill? Uh, your need for vitamin C may increase, in which case you need to take more of it and the cells will use it and probably not flush too much out if you're taking a very large dose. The function of vitamin C, one of its functions is it's an antioxidant. So um, oxi oxygen and oxidation, which we're hearing a lot about these days, can cause damage to our cells. Vitamin C acts to protect the cells from that damage. An important person in vitamin C's history recently was Dr. Linus Pauling. He, rec he saw that if you were ill with a flu or a cold and you took large doses of vitamin C that that seemed to help remedy the situation and people got better. 